Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to New Hope in the Lord. I'm Reverend Joseph, your host, and with me today is my co-host, Rosa Owens, and we welcome you to watch our show. Um, the terminology R&R, &R, when you think of that, um, most likely it'll come to your mind, rest and relaxation. I have to take a break from my, my work, uh, going on vacation, just relaxing. And uh, that's basically what people need to do. You know, uh, even in the Bible, Solomon said, you work, you work, you work, you work. The wisest man in the world, outside of Jesus. Uh, he had wisdom like nobody could ever have. He says, you work, you work, you work. You don't take time off. You don't have R&R. &R. You just keep saving the money, saving the money, saving the money. And then you pass on. And then you leave the money to the relatives and they just blow it, you know. So uh, this is just a side note. Uh, if you're out there and you're struggling, you're working, get some R&R &R and uh, it, it'll help you focus. But in the spiritual aspect, uh, I want to talk about R&R. &R. And the first R is religion. And uh, religion, uh, unfortunately, keeps people away from the second R. A relationship with Jesus. Uh, religion is mostly structured of tradition, rules, and regulation. And R for relationship is exactly what Jesus wants you to have. He wants you to just kind of bypass uh, that religion and come to a relationship. Now, in Christianity, quote unquote, a lot of the different uh, uh, um, denominations and Catholicism, they'll talk about Jesus, but they'll talk about it in the frame of religion. And there are some that talk about a frame in a relationship. And that's basically the difference. It's like night and day. You know, religion's not going to get you to heaven, but a relationship with Jesus will. And, and when an individual does come to Christ, he or she and they ask God to forgive them of their sins and ask them to come into their heart, then they get that R&R, &R, like an individual go on vacation, within their soul. Mm -hmm. They get a peace within the soul. They get a rest within the soul. They have a hope within their soul. R&R, &R, where are you? <clears throat> are you in religion or are you in relationship? And if you're not in either, you need to come to Christ and he'll change your life. Olga, would you like to introduce? Oh, Olga, sorry. <laughs> Rose, would you like it's to introduce okay. our guest yes, today? Yes, yes. Yeah. Olga Toglia, welcome to our program. How are you today? I'm blessed. Amen. <laughs> so as Reverend Joe was talking about the spirit of religion, you were brought up in Mexico in that kind of spirit. Can you talk to us about that? Yeah, I was born and raised in Mexico. I attended to a Catholic church. And that was what I followed, the religion. <laughs> right, all the do's and don'ts, right? Amen. If you have this need, pray to this saint. If you have something else, pray to the other saint. Yes, yes. So um, did your parents uh, take you to church? Uh, did they go to church? Yes, they did, every week. Every week? <laughs> yeah, every Sunday. Every Sunday yes. he took you to church, yes. your dad. Your dad, I think you said, was really into it, right? Yes, yes. My mother too, but uh, my father mostly, he was more Catholic, yes. <laughs> more religious. <laughs> more regimental about yes, that. Yes. So um, how did this religion work out for you when you went to school in Mexico? Uh, did everything go okay? Did you have any uh, peer pressure? Did you have any situations as you were growing up? Yes, very different from what I am today because when you being raised in a Catholic church, you don't have peace, you don't know the love of Christ, you, you don't know how to love people. But one thing I know when I was in probably first grade, when the nuns used to talk about Jesus, mm -hmm. that's one thing that used to touch my heart. I used to say, I want to be like Jesus one day. I want to be like him. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, Olga, you didn't know how. No. And, <laughs> and um, 
See, uh, as I opened up, religion uh, will, in Christianity, uh, tell you about Jesus. Yes. But um, it's just like, well, you have to put that, that um, you know, you have to put that table together. Yes. But there's no instructions how to put that table together. Right. And there's a lot of pieces. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it, it, it's, you look at it, you say, Gee, where's the instructions? And so you didn't get uh, the, the manual, uh, mm -hmm. how, how to receive Christ uh, in, in your life. So, so you must have grown up uh, as a youngster um, just kind of with no peace, uh, no, no hope, and probably even wanting to know, what am I doing here? Why am I here? Is that, is that what happened to you? Well, I knew in a certain way that uh, when I used to attend it to school and they used to bring the priest and you had to kiss the hand of the priest, I used mm. to say something that I, it wasn't right. When you used to go to confession, it wasn't right, but... Uh, but you did it because you were I had to do it because yeah, yeah. you had to be obedient to right. what you being raised to. <laughs> How did this re religion translate into your years of middle school, high school? Did you get any kind of problems? How did you cope with them? Well, I remember when I was taken uh, out from the uh, Catholic <coughs> Church, I mean, um, school? school, and I went to a uh, public school. I was very happy. <laughs> you were very happy. <laughs> Why I didn't is felt that? The pressure. I didn't feel the pressure to be following the Catholic <laughs> religion. <laughs> so, so you had you had you had a lot of uh, <coughs> fear. Mm. Uh, basically, uh, was in your heart yeah. because um, of, of the tradition and the uh, you know it, it's like overwhelming. Yeah, she yes. was afraid if she yeah. make the wrong move, she would get and in the, trouble. And, and also the peer pressure with mm. students. Yes, with, with the with the rules and the regulations right. and the traditions, mm -hmm. as opposed to. Later on in your life, you had a, re a relationship, in, in, you know, with the Lord, mm -hmm. and um, so uh, in your in your life as you were growing up and and you were in school, um, did you just kind of ever ever say to yourself, like, uh, what's life all about? No, but I did experience like rejection. Uh, I I I felt. Uh, this this fear of so lacking. It was a void. There was a it's, void. It's yeah. always a void. And, and see, that's that's basically the same type yeah. of thing. Yeah. Uh, the void and well, w w why am I like this? Like you were happy that you were in school, but yet <coughs> there was still a void. Even though you had a nice heart. family, a nice <coughs> mom yes. and dad, yes. and nice, yes. Yes. you know, was, they were well off. But yeah. you had that void. So how did you fill that void? Did you try to fill that void? Well, I didn't know how to, but I, uh, you come to a point that you close yourself because you don't know how to function in life because you're afraid that you're going to make a mistake. So, right. so you, you, you were sharing with me before that you went to dancing clubs, and that's where you met your My husband. present husband. <laughs> how did that happen? Was that a... A thing you a routine thing for you to go to these dancing clubs? No, that was one of my first experience. Uh huh. Actually, I was all in all like nineteen. <laughs> uh, and your first experience, and why you met your husband? <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> no, we went to dancing club with. At uh, this point, they had, it was only a place where you dance, but no drinks, nothing. And through another friend, she introduces my husband at that time was my husband <laughs> and I didn't like him. You didn't like him. <laughs> I didn't like he was him. an American, right? You said he went to Mexico, tried to learn uh, Spanish because right, he failed the right, class right. in the university and you did not like him. Why? Because I went through the looks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But he fell in love with you, right? He it was did. an instant uh, yeah. love at first sight. Right. How did that develop? How did, what happened? Did you get married right away or? Well, we did by law. Uh, we got married in in, a mo in a one month, and that's because uh, he went and asked my parents permission to give me the, my engagement ring, and he said he wanted to bury me. And they one said month. yes. Without, before he asking me or my parents asking me. 
<laughs> that's kind of that's yeah. kind of unusual there. Yeah. You know, when you were saying that you were afraid to to do anything, you made a mistake. So so you would withdrew like you were you were introverted. Yes. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> was that something that when you got married uh, that you continued to um, you know live as an introverted person uh, because of your emptiness that was inside, because marriage doesn't fill the emptiness. No, 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 no. With, like I was telling Rosa, when my husband, when they asked him for permission to marry me, I thought because we ca came from nine in the family, nine children in the family, so I thought, well, maybe my parents wants one Get less, <laughs> one less. So here's a, a spirit of rejection knocking at a door yes. again. Yes, again, rejection. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. So you did end up marrying him? Yes, yes. Mm. And you well, were the good uh, wife, a, a perfect wife. You came very obedient. You came to this country. And what happened then? Was it bliss? Well, was it, bl you know, happiness? It wasn't happiness because it came to a point that he got sick. I found out he was sick. Mm. He had a mental problem. Mm. And right there, there was so much confusion. Mm. Uh, so much question to ask God, why? And fear, what I'm gonna do? You didn't speak the language when you came here? No, I learned, I spoke, I started speaking when I, uh, after a year, after a year I learned the language. Yeah, okay. yes. Yeah. So, so well, when you're here in America, your family's in Mexico, right. yes. so you're alone with your husband, yes. uh, you find out he has mental issues, yes. you must have, actually had a lot of panicking, a lot of fear yes. that came in. Yes. Uh, were you still going to, were you, when you left uh, Catholic school and you went to the uh, regular school, school mm -hmm. were you still going to church at yes. the time? Yes, I was going to, to church for a little while, but then my husband was Presbyterian. Oh. And it was a point that we wasn't going to church at all. So, so now you have really no guidance at all. Nope. And and now you have fear, mm. and you haven't been going to church. You find out your husband's mentally uh, challenged, <laughs> and you have no family here. Uh, um, what what did you try to do to to try to get things a little better uh, for you? And you're you're an introvert too, <laughs> so you have like everything's against you. Yes, yes. I mean, there's no bright light. And mm -hmm. so, how, how how did that work, Olga, for well, you? I remember asking him, we have to go to church. I don't care if we go to your church, but we have to go to church. I knew I need a God. Mm. So and you knew? I, I, I know. I know I need a God. I need it. Because somehow I could feel it, mm -hmm. somehow. Uh, so so you went to his church. Yes. Um, now, did you hear more religion at his church? It was or more religion, just like the Catholic Church, yeah. more, more or less. Yeah. I went back to the Catholic Church again. And how was he to you during this time? Was your husband nice to you? Or? Well, because of his illness and being with the doctor, they didn't know what, he, what was the problem. So mm. he wasn't, he could be a husband, he could be a father. So it was a burden in my life. Mm. And you had three kids at this time, right? Yes. Yeah. Did he ever get violent with you? Can you t talk to us about that? Yeah, for one time he, we were in Mexico, we moved after six years, we moved back to Mexico and uh, one day he got up, he was spinning, spinning, spinning. He left the house, came back, spinning, spinning, because his mind went off. So I called one of the neighbors, was a doctor, so he gave him uh, some medication and he said it will be enough to so knock, knock, knock a, a horse down. <laughs> and he did it. We thought he was ready to go take a nap, and uh, he suddenly became violent. He tried to choke me, mm. and at that point, I remember calling unto the Lord, "Help! I uh, said, help, help, help me, because I don't want to be. I saw myself dead in my bed, and and my little ones they were gonna come from school. My I had three children. My daughter was six, the, the, uh, and the boys four or less." And I said, they're gonna come from school, they're gonna find me dead, who's gonna take care of them? Mm. But a guy was 
good to spare me. <laughs> and how did, uh, how did God help you in a way? What happened after that? Well, at that point, I got sick. He got sick. My nerves were shocked. Then I developed agoraphobia. I couldn't go mm. out. I, I developed anxiety, anxiety attacks. Mm. Um, I was a mess. My, but then God, the, the Lord called me through a uh, co-worker. She started asking me for almost a year to a prayer meeting and came to a point they said, I had it off. <laughs> I had to go to that prayer meeting because I don't want her to bother me anymore. Right. See, here's, here's the situation, <laughs> how, how the devil is, is so uh, cunning. Yeah. Um, he probably, I don't know this because I haven't talked with you all about it, but he probably, in your midst of your turmoil, in the midst of your suffocation, because basically you were suffocating, mm -hmm. um, he probably brought you, your mind back to religion. To the, to the Catholic Church, to the Protestant Church, mm -hmm. and that there was no help there. So now you're asked to go to a prayer meeting, but yet the thing in your mind is you're thinking about, well, what good is it going to be? Because I've had no help with church, right. you see? Because, but here's the real thing. Now, when she asked you to go to the prayer meeting, and so finally, you know, you, you made a, a, a conscience, a right decision, and so w what happened when you were at the prayer meeting, Olga? Well, when we got there, it was in Mount Kisco. It was a school. And when I saw there was people sitting, like taking a class, I said, oh, I'm going to kill her. <laughs> 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 because I said, she brought me all the way up here to a class. <laughs> I was expecting a prayer. <laughs> and um, I told myself, take a look at it. She's there, and she she's there all the way in the back. I said, okay, we go for five minutes, so she doesn't bother me anymore. When we went there, uh, this man was having a Bible class. Oh, he's a Bible study. A Bible reading study, the word of yes. God. Yeah. And when I found myself, I was sitting, listening, I started crying because mm -hmm. he was saying that all are, we all are sinners. And I didn't know I was a sinner. And when he was describing just to steal one penny is a sin, I, I saw I started crying. And I forgot about where I was. Mm. I got the conviction of the Lord because I was a sinner. Yeah. I, so I started crying. That's now, isn't that something? You, you, you've been in church. <laughs> all these years. All these years. And, and you never heard from the pulpit yeah. that we've all sinned, right. that we're all fall short of the perfection which Jesus requires of us in order to make it into heaven if we're going to try to do it on our own. And we can't. But we can't, but he's the perfect one. And you never knew that you were a sinner wow. because you were a good person. Right. So that's what a lot of people think because you don't drink yeah. or because you don't do drugs. <clears throat> you think you live in a perfect life. And, right. and you're not and fornicating, not. <laughs> you're not having adultery, you're, uh -huh. you're, you're, you're not doing that stuff, so I'm a, I'm a good person. Right. But the person that they have to match their goodness up to it's is Jesus. not another, another person, it's Christ. Amen. And so he's perfect. Amen. So you finally, after all these years, found out that you were a sinner Amen. and that you needed a savior. <laughs> And so Amen. was that the day that you came to Christ? Yes, yes, me and my whole family. <laughs> Your whole family? Yes, we accepted the Lord. And, yeah. and, and so right after that, you know, sometimes people have an instant um, revelation of, of the Lord and, and God instantly touches them and, and things mm. go away. Uh, people have been healed, of myself, drugs and alcohol instantly down the toilet and never to pick up no desire gambling stopped instantly um, but did that happen to you with your illness there uh olga or now with the illness that you have were you able to deal with it uh, in a different way no right away not a, not right away uh it took a long time many years even being in church and it was one thing that also the enemy tried to because I was afraid to go out, I couldn't even go to church. And I remember when um, they came to pick me, pick me up the first time, I was crying. I can't, I can't go. Fear. Fear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this lady, when she told me, this sister says, do you know the enemy is trying to steal 
from the cold that God has from you. That's mm -hmm. why you can't, he don't want you to go to church. Right. Yeah. And, and the enemy at that Satan. moment, yeah. yeah, at that moment, I say, oh, so I say, okay, I have to go because I didn't want to be disobedient and I wanted God. I wanted to, to see what God, God. please right. God, yes. But so then it was a process in your life oh, that yes. you got better and better yeah. by uh, getting into the Word, right? Yes. So yes. what are some of the promises that made you stand strong and God helped you? Well, one of the one of my favorites is from Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Jesus Christ, which has strengthened me. Yes. Right. Yes. So you did. And, and in order to be able to go out, I uh, will bring my Bible with me and I open it and it's Isaiah 4, 53, do not be dismayed, do not be afraid because I have you in the palm of my hand. Right. That helped me tremendously, the Word oh. of God. So the Word of God, the Word of God is alive. Yeah. And oh, yes. And, and, and it's moving yes. and it's performing miracles. So mm -hmm. it, it changed you so you could yes. Yes. get better and better. You, you know, I had a, 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 a situation with a Muslim a former Muslim that I met uh, last week. And it's on the subject of the Word of God, the Bible. And, um, you know, he was told mm -hmm. about Jesus through mm -hmm. a friend who came to Christ. And he, he says, you know, that he was going to kill him. You know, the fa no, 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 you're a traitor, whatever. Yeah. And so finally, he said, I'm going to give you the Bible. Would you read it like the New Testament for one week? And the fellow says, I'm going to give it to you for one week. Mm -hmm. And the fellow took it. He read the Bible six times in one week. And it changed his life, and he yeah. gave his life yeah. to Jesus yeah. Christ. Not the religion that he was brought up in, right. but the relationship came when he received Jesus into his life. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now you probably, not, now you're, you're still a sick woman, but you're getting better, mm -hmm. and your husband is still a sick man. You were probably so much different oh, in yes. handling his sickness and your sickness, right? Yeah. Why don't you tell us about that? Well, I learned to trust the Lord. Because the word of God says that he would never leave us or forsake us. He said, if my husband get a work, he's our provider, and he has provided for all our needs. We never lack anything. And he's our only hope. And in this earth, nobody can give you peace. That surpasses all understanding. Only God can give you the peace for all situations. The Word of God says you may, you're going to have afflictions in this earth, mm -hmm. but the peace of God that surpasses all understanding is with us. The yeah. grace of God is what helps us. Yeah. So, so you did take some medication to help you and your in husband. In the beginning, yes. In the beginning. In the beginning. But then you slowly um, did away with it. Yes. Because so I used to say, miracle. I used to say, Lord, this little tablet, <laughs> all this little piece, that I said, I'm not going to put this little tablet uh, because you're better than a tablet. That's right. <laughs> you're the best medicine. <laughs> He's a physician. Mm. He's a, 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 the best doctor uh, above all doctors. So we have to learn to exercise mm. and, and have faith that he's a doctor. He's a healer. He's a provider. He's the greater aim of all things, the greater aim of uh, troubles, the greater aim of afflictions, the greater aim of uh, needs. So you didn't give up. You kept no. on confessing the oh, word of God. Amen. Even though at times your own daughter said, Ma, why don't you leave your uh, dad? You, you were sharing that with me. Yes. But you did not. No. Uh, and, and, and how's your husband doing now? He's doing much better. <laughs> much better. Much better. Right? And, yes. and he's not choking you anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because he received Jesus. Amen. And, Amen. and Jesus changes people's lives. Oh, yes. and, and you hung in there. Yes. You see? And, and so uh, you, you know now the difference between religion and relationship. Amen. And religion is darkness. Relationship is light. Mm -hmm. And now you're not headed for hell because you found out you're a sinner <laughs> and before you thought you weren't a sinner mm -hmm. and anybody who is a good person is going to hell if they don't have Christ in their life because good people don't go to heaven, no. only forgiven people. Right. Amen. And there's a heck of a lot of people that were bad that yes. are in heaven now because they came to Christ. Amen. Yeah. And so, and your family come to Christ. Now, 
you have you you have grandchildren. Are, are they going to church? They and, all go to church. All my children go to church. <laughs> and they receive Jesus. Amen. Yes. What about your nine brothers and sisters? Did you talk to them mm. about the relationship with God? Are they? Well, let me see. I following have the Lord. Yeah. I have two sisters that in the in the Lord, and uh, my older brother. Now he started receiving. Looking. Yes, yes, because he's an architect in Mexico. Uh, he one day he comment that he was in the book of history, and I say to him, "Well, you, I say, and I'm done." He say, and I say to him, "No, you're not, because you have one more book to go." And he said, hmm. "What book?" <laughs> I said, "You name in the book of life." <laughs> the Bible. That's the one that is the main. The Bible. That's right. Cause, Bible. Because right. when when you come to Christ, your name is written in, in, the, book in the book of life. life. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And yes. and and so right. basically, um, you you know, uh, in the natural, people say, "Well, I don't need Jesus. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. Right. I don't smoke. I'm a family man. I don't p a party like I that. I all I need. Like that. I have yeah, like that over here. And you were that type of person. But the difference, uh, Olga between the old Olga without Jesus and the new Olga is like 180 degrees. Oh, yes. Turn around because of one man. Yes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The pow there's power the, in the name of Jesus. Power, the po power in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And it's, it's, go it's reflecting because people uh, probably, you know, when you were working with people, they saw the light. Right. And, and what you're doing is you're a, you're a carrier of, of life. Right. Because the Holy Spirit's living in her. And you. since she was a little girl, she did love the name of Jesus. Yes. So even though she did not have the relationship, just saying the name of Jesus got power, yeah, and, and, and God made a way for and, you. And, and, and it was the Lord that pro intervened. The angel yes. intervened, uh, and, and something happened with your husband that he, the light came on in his right, mind to right. stop choking you. Right. You know, because how many people continue to choke? And kill somebody. That's right. You know, yeah. like that. When there is no Jesus. Is when there's no Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Well, Olga, it was great sharing with you. So God bless God you. Bless Thank you. you for coming. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Olga. Praise God. Yes. You know, the scripture uh, is, is truth. Now, you could read something in one paper, and then you could read the same account in the next paper, and they're different. And But with the Bible... The Lord's the same yesterday, mm -hmm. today, and forever. You know, laws are being made today that are anti-God, anti-Bible, anti-Christ. And people say, oh, I could do it. But God doesn't change. He's the mm -hmm. same yesterday, today, and forever. And his word says it's appointed once to die and then the day of judgment. And what does it profit a man again the whole world and for him or her to lose their own soul? You don't want your soul to be lost. You want to come to Christ. You want to receive him in your heart. He loves you. He died for you. And he wants your name to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Make the right choice. Receive Jesus today. Thank you for watching our show.